Hello everybody, Thy Lord Root here, and welcome to my first Let's Play series. I've chosen a game from my favorite series of all time, which is um, the Ultima series, and that game in particular is Ultima 7. In many ways, the Ultima series could be uh, considered the pioneer for the modern computer RPG. And Ultima 7 in particular is the series' favorite of many Ultima fans. It was also the last Ultima game to have been released before EA bought out Origin Systems, and you'll sure see some uh, subtle EA bashing throughout the game. And I'm most fond of Ultima 6, but I'll freely admit that it's difficult to beat Ultima 7. So up until recently, obtaining this game legally has actually been pretty difficult, and the reason for this is because the last time Ultima 7 was available, well, you got through the Ultima Collection. Uh, this has been out of print for some time. Fortunately, good old games, uh, that's GOG.com, uh, has recently started distributing it again, so, um, basically, um, this is good because it's sold at a fair price with no DRM, and if you're interested, I suggest you check it out. Uh, you might have also noticed I'm using a program called Exalt, and this lets you uh, basically run the game on modern operating systems. And you can download that at exalt.sourceforge.net. And so this game actually shipped in two parts. Uh, the first installment in the game we're playing today is The Black Gate. And uh, there was a second part that was released a few months afterwards called Serpent Isle. Uh, both of them actually got expansion packs, uh, which you can actually see are installed. Um, and, um, we'll be making use of those expansion packs probably within the future. Uh, I'm not sure exactly um, when I'll get around to doing the Forge of Virtue in this Let's Play, but um, you can sure that it'll be part of the, the actual playthrough. And so for the most part, I plan uh, for this to be a clean run, and so I won't use the built-in cheating menu, of course. Y'all probably don't want to see me cheating. And There's also this uh, room in, that you can reach through the blacksmith shop in Trinsic that um, I'm going to explicitly avoid as well. So uh, if you're interested in either one of those methods of cheating, you can get that information on the internet, but I'm not going to cover it here. Anyway, let's go ahead and move forward. So this game, um, when I first started playing it, I was probably 11 or 12, and I remember actually um, first playing it on my 486. It was a 33 megahertz machine with 32 megabytes of RAM. I remember my dad and I put in um, 32 megabytes of RAM just so that I could run Windows 95 on it. Because apparently um, Windows 95 um, at that point was uh, not surprisingly memory hungry and um, you needed that much RAM for a good experience with it. And I remember this scene in particular um, just blowing my mind away. I hadn't ever seen anything like it. Avatar! Know that Britannia has entered into a new age of enlightenment. Know that the time has finally come for the one true lord of Britannia to take his place at the head of his people. Under my guidance, Britannia will flourish, and all of the people shall rejoice and pay homage to their new guardian. Know that you too shall kneel before me, Avatar. You too will soon acknowledge my authority, for I shall be your companion, your provider, and your master. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Isn't that epic? I mean, the dude sounds like a deity. I was just totally blown away by this. If there's one thing that can be said about almost all the Ultima games, and that's, um... That the artwork is uh, always pretty good in the Ultima series, um... Particularly once Origin 
got some capital and they were, um, they had this town of hiring awesome artists who could, um, put together these great scenes and, um, I think this is a good example of it to be, uh, to be completely honest. I mean, this was, um, this is big stuff back in 1992 or 1993. Just excellent artwork. So, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new character, and you'll notice that character creation is a little bit different from the previous Ultima games. In fact, it's probably the least involved as far as character creation is concerned at this point. I'll go ahead and create a character. I'll call him, uh, Thy Father for reasons that'll become pretty obvious in a bit. And you can select your gender. Um, in this game. Um, I think I'll just probably go with the default. And we'll go ahead and we'll step through that moon gate. Now I wonder what could be happening here. I think if that something like that were to happen in real life, it'd be brown trousers time for most people. This dude, his name is Yolo, by the way, uh, is actually really excited to see me. So it's been 200 years since the last game. Oh. Um, which, um, was of course Ultima 6, um, and you'll see that the world has changed a lot since Ultima 6. There's been a lot of new things added in, um, like, well, for instance, you can rent carriages now, or you can purchase carriages, and, uh, you also, instead of being able to buy scuffs, um, you can just buy shops, but, um, anyway, as you can see here, there was, um, a murder, and it was actually a pretty badass murder, if you ask me, we'll, uh, we'll get to see that in a bit. Run right away! Yeah. I've been having a lot of trouble pulling that off, but, um, as you can see, you can outrun the mayor if you're quick enough. So you can actually, uh, not accept this, and it leads to a pretty interesting series of events. So keep in mind that this dude has pretty much accepted that you can't be the real Avatar, but you go back and talk to him, and, um, you say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna reconsider investigating the murder, and he's like, you really must be the Avatar after all. It turns out, of course, that he actually really doesn't trust you, and we'll get to see that probably pretty soon, maybe within the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so, of course, so. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty bloody scene here. Um. And tell him I found a body because his reaction is priceless. He acts like it's not common knowledge that there's a body at the scene of a murder. So yeah, the the thing I was looking for here was actually the key. And you'll notice I picked it up. 
uh, earlier because we're about to um, we're about to go do some questioning and we'll find some evidence with that key and so uh, of course this dude's the blacksmith his name is uh, Christopher and notice this is like the first question he asks um, when you make the report um, and he just told you the answer Apparently, him and that gargoyle that's been run through with the pitchfork have uh, been slaughtered. I mean, obviously. Um, we have to figure out um, who it is. So, um, now we're going to come up with what I consider to be somewhat of a very minor weakness in the um, in the, the conversation engine and it's not so much a problem with the conversation engine as much as the way that the, the dialogue was written uh, you can notice first of all that um, if I um, if I talk to people um, a lot of times, um, the game will assume, even if I haven't asked for the person's name, that uh, I already know who that person is. So, we talked to Johnson here. Uh, that's his actual name. Um, well, this one's actually pretty well done. But we're not really getting any information out of him, so um, we'll go to our next target who does um, who does happen to show this weakness if I'm not mistaken uh, so this is um, this is a kid alone in a house that it turns out um, to be um, to be the child of the, the dude who just died. Now, you would think telling him that I'm his father would actually leave him quite angry. Um, but he just seems to accept it. Um... Let's see, like, I haven't even asked him what his name is, and he, I already seem to know that his name is Sparks somehow. Um. So, I'm gonna ask him about the key real quick. Um. I think this is actually pretty wise on Yellow's part, and I'm more than inclined to agree with him. I'm not exactly sure that bringing a 14-year-old kid along with you for an adventure is a great thing to do. But of course, what's interesting about this is that that's enough to to like totally cheer him up. Like he doesn't even seem to be bothered by his father's death anymore. And not only that, but he joined me without me asking his name. <laughs> 